This video introduces the idea of polar coordinates. Polar coordinates give an alternative way of describing the location of points on the plane. Instead of describing a point in terms of its x and y coordinates, those are the Cartesian coordinates of the point, when using polar coordinates, we instead describe the point in terms of a radius r and an angle theta. r is the distance of the point from the origin, and theta is the angle that radius line makes with the positive x-axis. Let's plot these points given in polar coordinates. So the 8 here is the value of the radius, and the negative 2 thirds pi is the value of the angle, theta. The negative angle means that I need to go clockwise from the positive x-axis instead of counterclockwise like I normally would for a positive angle. So here, a negative 2 thirds pi means that I need to go to this line right here, and the 8 of, for the radius means I need to go 8 lines out from the origin, so my point should be around right here. The next point has a radius of 5 and an angle of 3 pi. The angle of positive 3 pi means that I go counterclockwise starting at the positive x-axis. Here I've gone around by 2 pi, and here I've got an extra pi to make 3 pi. Now the radius of 5 means I need to go 5 units out from the origin, so that puts me about right here. Notice that I could have also labeled this point with the polar coordinates of 5 pi. There's more than one way to assign polar coordinates to a point. The next point has an angle of pi over 4 and a radius of negative 12. The negative radius means that I need to jump to the other side of the circle before I plot the point. In other words, instead of plotting the point at an angle of pi over 4 and a radius of 12, which would be about right here, I go to the opposite side of the circle and plot it at the same distance from the origin but 180 degrees, or pi radians, around the circle over here. Now I could have also labeled this point using a positive radius of 12 and using an angle of pi over 4 plus pi, or 5 pi over 4. And in general, a point with polar coordinates of negative r theta means the same point as the point with polar coordinates are theta plus pi. Adding pi just makes us jump around to the opposite side of the circle. To convert between polar and Cartesian coordinates, it's handy to use the following equations. First, x is equal to r cosine theta, y is equal to r sine theta, r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared, which means that r is plus or minus the square root of x squared plus y squared, and tangent theta is equal to y divided by x. Let's see where these equations come from. If we draw a point with coordinates x, y, and draw lines to make a right triangle, the height of that triangle is y, the length of the base is x, and the hypotenuse has length r. Theta is the measure of this interior angle. From trig, we know that cosine theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, so that's x over r, which means that x is equal to r cosine theta. Similarly, sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse, that's y over r, which means that y is equal to r sine theta. That gives us the first two equations. The Pythagorean theorem tells us that x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared, and that gives us the third equation. Finally, tangent theta is opposite over adjacent, so that's y over x, which is the fourth equation. 
To convert 5, negative pi over 6, from polar to Cartesian coordinates, we just use the fact that x equals r cosine theta and y equals r sine theta. So in this case, x is equal to 5 times cosine of negative pi over 6. That's 5 times square root of 3 over 2. And y is equal to 5 sine negative pi over 6. So that's equal to negative 5 halves. To convert negative 1, negative 1 from Cartesian to polar coordinates, we know that negative 1 and negative 1 are our x and y values. So we need to use the fact that r squared is x squared plus y squared. That is, r squared is negative 1 squared plus negative 1 squared, or 2. Also, tangent theta is y over x, so that's negative 1 over negative 1, or 1. Now there's several values of r and theta that satisfy these equations. r could be square root of 2, or negative the square root of 2, and theta could be pi over 4, or 5 pi over 4, or we could add multiples of 2 pi to either of these answers. But not all combinations of r and theta get us to the right point. The point with Cartesian coordinates, negative 1, negative 1, lies in the third quadrant. But if we use a theta value of, say, pi over 4 and an r value of square root of 2, that would get us to the first quadrant. So instead, we need to use the polar coordinates of square root of 2 and 5 pi over 4, or, if we prefer, negative square root of 2 and pi over 4. We could also add any multiple of 2 pi to either of these values of theta and get yet another way of representing the point in polar coordinates. This video talked about polar coordinates and converting in between Cartesian coordinates and polar coordinates using some familiar equations from trig.